This episode of The Phenomenon is sponsored by HelloFresh. Hey everybody, it's Jared from The Phenomenon. I just want to take a quick second to tell you all about HelloFresh. In The Phenomenon, it's not safe for our characters to go outside, but if they had HelloFresh, they'd never even need to. HelloFresh's meal kit delivery service delivers responsibly obtained ingredients straight to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging. Cooks of any level will love their simple recipes and pictured step-by-step instructions. And you'll spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping and have more time for the important stuff, like planning your escape from the shards and the tall ones. Seriously, when our first box showed up, the ingredients were so fresh and the final product was a delicious meal. For a total of $60 off, that's $20 off each of your first three boxes, visit HelloFresh.com slash Phenomenon60 and enter promo code Phenomenon60. Don't get stuck eating those old survival bunker rations. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Phenomenon60, that's P-H-E-N-O-M-E-N-O-N-6-0, and enter promo code Phenomenon60 for $60 off, and rediscover the excitement of cooking. Giants, man. (laughs) Fuck. Yep. This sucks. I wish we weren't picked for this scout. I don't like it in here. We'll be through quickly. There's a shitload of bodies here. Yeah. They looked out the windows. They didn't have IR. We'll be fine. Just keep your fucking goggles on this time. Yeah, yeah. Where did those fucking giants come from? First the shards and now these? I never thought I'd say this, but I wish we were back on the organ. We will be soon. Just keep moving. Think this leads outside? Try it. The handle is fucking freezing. Is it stuck? Yeah. Frozen? Could be. Yeah. Try it again. Just stay quiet. Okay. Three, two, one. (sighs) That was not quiet. Sorry. And we're still inside. (sighs) Which way now? What the fuck is that? Oh shit! Uh. Shoot it! Uh, I'm trying! I'm shoot it! Oh my god, it's Jeff! What are you doing? Oh, fucking shoot it! This is the emergency alert system. All normal programming has been discontinued during this global emergency. There continues to be no advancement in our efforts to mitigate or end either the aerial phenomenon commonly known as the shards or the sentient creatures commonly known as the tall ones. Visual or physical contact with the shards will result in immediately entering a catatonic state, shortly followed by exsanguination and death through unknown means. Movement across the surface is possible in closed vehicles with their windows blacked out. Infrared and ultraviolet vision is safe. The shards are attracted to heat, light, and movement, and will interlock and cover any moving vehicle, heat source, or structure emanating sound, but will lose interest after several hours without further stimulus. Engagement with the hostile and deadly creatures known as the tall ones is highly discouraged. They are highly intelligent, capable of planning, adapting, and predicting the actions of others. They are accompanied by a significant drop in ambient temperature and cannot be killed by any known means. The usual precautions continue to apply. Do not look outside. Do not look at the sky. Do not make noise. Do not generate any more heat or light than is absolutely vital to your survival. You have not been abandoned. You have not been forgotten. The bodies aren't moving anymore. So, the shards are gone? That would be my guess. 
You think we're in the clear? Um, I'll leave that one up to you, sir. I'm just along for the ride. Oh, real helpful, Chief. All right, let's go. Watkins and Kellogg are late. They can meet us there after we make sure whoever that is is okay. Aye, right, sir. Now, uh, how did you want to get across? Straight line, here to there. Get over to whoever that is, quick and quiet. Isn't that rather blunt, sir? Well, best to get it over with, you know. One way or the other, sir? Yeah, let's go. woman. Jesus Christ, she's been shot. I don't think this is our VIP, sir. She's armed and geared for war. If this was the VIP, she could have accompanied Hardy to the riverfront. This has got to be a civilian. I agree. The question is, are Hardy and them shot? I'll look. Be careful. There might be. Who's there? You there in the dark back there. Come out. We won't hurt you. We're not here to hurt anyone. Did, did, did you kill her? She's alive. And no, we're not the shooters. We know them, but we don't know why they shot her. We came for someone specific, but we're no threat to you. Can you take care of your friend? No, she took care of us. You can come out and get her. We won't hurt you. Oh, hi there, little girl. You don't have to be scared. We won't hurt you. Is Sharon gonna die? I hope not. We're gonna help her. How did she survive? She was shot some time ago. Well, it looks like the thigh shot was a through and through. Soft tissue only. No major arteries or veins hit. Clotted up on its own. The wrist? Jesus, that's lucky. Looks like she held it until she passed out. Long enough for the blood to freeze and keep her hand in place. Her hand is frozen in place? Well, the glove. She got very lucky, I think. So she live? With any luck. What can we do? We can get her to our sub to see a halfway decent doctor with halfway decent supplies. And what about us? Well, shit. Sorry, shoot. I don't suppose I can leave you behind. You'll have to come with. Thank you. That is a very generous, Mr... Longmire. Captain Longmire. U.S. Navy. This here is Chief Petty Officer Cox, my master at arms. You can call me Jim. Uh, my name is Emil. This is my daughter, Saria. Hi. And her name is Sharon. Wish we'd met under better circumstances, Emil. Cox, her blood has dripped down and frozen her to the floor in a couple of spots. Could you find something to melt or pry her off? Yes, sir. Is there somewhere in the back we can put her down? A bed or a desk? Anything flat that could be made comfortable? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Uh, a couch. Good. Take the... Saria. Take Saria and go set it up. Find blankets or something. She's frostbitten in the extremities and her core temp is borderline hypothermic at best. Cox, you find anything? Spatula and rubbing alcohol, sir? Jesus Christ. Okay, use the alcohol to melt the edges, then pry her up with a spatula. Then you and Emil get her to the back and break out a med kit and bandage her wounds. Pack her wrist especially. If that starts bleeding, she'll bleed out. Once she's taken care of, get on the horn with the Oregon and let them know that we're bunking down here for the night. Lucinda. Angela, where are you? Still making my way to Omeo, trying to find some kind of airport or aircraft of some kind. And the tall ones? They're everywhere. I called them to report. What's happening over there? I was able to scavenge some camping and survival materials from town before I left. I've been moving at night and sleeping during the day. I've set up the tent under the boughs of a tree and covered it with the branches. I can hear them walking around, but so far they haven't noticed me. So they can't smell you or sense your heat? It would appear not. 
Not that it would matter. It's fucking freezing here, so I'm not sure how much heat I have left. I'm sure. The tall ones absorb all ambient heat energy. Yeah, there's that, but also, it's Sweden. What about the shards? Oh, they're around. I found some night vision at the police station and have stuck to heavily wooded areas, so I've avoided being too exposed. Lucinda, these tall ones are dangerous. I've come across the bodies of some people they must have found. It's not pretty. I know. We're dealing with them here as well. Not only are they dangerous, but they're pretty much indestructible. Do not engage them. It will not end well for you. Have they been engaged there? Yes. And every encounter has ended with numerous casualties. They have to know we aren't going to beat any of these things with guns and bullets. I know. But the leadership here is incompetent. Have you tried talking to them? Of course. But they're all little toy soldiers following orders. Mindless. Unthinking. Blind. Although I'm mulling an alternative approach to try to shake things up. An alternative approach? What does... Lucinda, I should go there around. Okay. Check in again soon. I will. Don't do anything stupid there. I won't do anything that isn't necessary. Fair enough. Bye, Lucinda. Goodbye, Angela. I sketch you if you keep moving. What the hell is that? Is that the door? government intercom built a bunker that works for Christ's sake. I'm gonna crack the door one inch. I have a gun so don't try anything. Who is it? Zoe, it's Victor. Can I please come in? Holy shit, Victor! Get in here, quick! Victor! <laughs> Good to see you. How did you get here? What are you doing here? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good to see you too. You changed the access code. You know that's against protocol. You think I'll just let anyone waltz right in? I could have shot you. Yeah. Well, I'll take my chances with you over the things out there. What are you doing here? I thought you were in Japan. <coughs> I was. <coughs> I was there when shit hit the fan. <coughs> I only survived with the assistance of one of my contacts in the government. <coughs> How did you... <coughs> Get to Chicago. Are you okay? <clears throat> I don't know how to tell you this, but you smell incredibly bad. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, not a lot of places to shower out there, you know? Yeah, but you smell like urine and God knows what else. Uh, well, sometimes you have to take shelter in less than ideal places. Like where? A port chan Well, yeah. Oh, God, no. Oh, Victor, I'm so, I'm so sorry. You can take a shower. I'll, I'll take up something for you to wear. <laughs> that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. should have been back by now. Henry, relax. He'll be back and he'll be fine. But what if something happened? 
Alex will be gone, and we won't have the medicine. Henry, sit down. Uh, I just... Henry, sit down. It should be me out there. You need to stay in here. You're the one who belongs to the project, and you're the one with a responsibility to this bunker. I have a responsibility to my family. And you're fulfilling it. Alex is getting the medicine. Rowan will be okay. Just be patient. I think you're just jealous he's getting some fresh air. A little fresh air would be nice. Well, you'll have to exercise some patience for that, too. Dr. Walters, Dr. Walters, I saw Alex on the monitors. He's coming? He's running. We've got to open the door. The Phenomenon is written and directed by Jared J. Smith, based on the novel The Phenomenon by R.K. Kadick. It's produced by Andrew Pomeroy and Jared J. Smith, and co-produced by Oiku Jakar Smith. Sound design and music by Andrew Pomeroy. Cover art by Amanda Pacharski. This episode features the voices of Tora Alexander, Oiku Jakar Smith, Donovan Christie Jr., Peyton Michelle Edwards, Leslie Frey, Carter Scott Horton, Peter Kendall, Ben Lorenz, Gary Lee Mahmood, Miss Sandra Mathongo, Danielle Mullen, Michael Paladine, Sarah Parchisepe, Jerry J. Smith, Morgan Starr, and Bradley James Tejeda. Backgrounds include the voices of Craig Brown, David J. Dixon, Whitley Harris, Ida Burlove Kennaway. Charlotte Norup, Francine Padilla, Chris Rosewood, Zachary Valdo, and Dave the Duke Warburton. The Phenomenon is a production of Luciola Creative.